Hello, YouTubers. Well, I'm back out here once again at my uh, commercial uh, logging site here. Uh, getting a little bit of poplar on the pile here now. Finally starting to get there, but uh, been a slow process. Haven't been doing as much as I should have, but well, it's not the only thing I do. I've got, like I say, I got an active farm and uh, a lot of responsibilities. So this is just a for me now, this is uh, coming coming to a close here in the next little while here. It's, uh, we're getting well into spring and, uh, well, getting busy on the farm. I got a lot of other stuff to uh, attend to, but uh, I still like to come out here every couple, three days and uh, scratch around for a few hours and uh, put some wood in the pile. It's beautiful, beautiful afternoon here right now. It's warm and sunny and light breeze. Just a great, great day to be out in the bush uh, cutting a little bit of wood. So I thought I'd sneak away here for a little while and do a little something but uh, anyways I was here yesterday came in with my uh, with a case uh, backhoe here and uh, dug out this uh, this ugly pine tree that was in the way here I'm getting to where I got to uh, be able to uh, drive past drop my trees and then uh, turn around and uh, butt up my uh, logs there even up the end of the pile and that uh, that ugly uh, pine tree was standing right here in the way so I uh, Came with the backhoe and uh, dug a couple of scoops, uh, broke the roots on the one side and then flipped it over and uh, rolled it out. Now I got to trim that up and uh, shove the stump and the limbs and all the crap out of the way. Along with a couple of poplar trees here on the edge of the trail here, they were kind of, uh, I mean I could have cut them down but the stumps would still be there and then the, the trucks would have a hard time uh, getting around the corner here as they're sort of pulling out of the pile here going that away. So I decided just to knock them over when I was here and uh, like I say I'll buck the stumps off of them and uh, put them in the pile and all that and I got a bunch of other wood here the other day when I was here I threw down here I've got probably three four five cords I don't know I got a good bunch down in the back over here on the back side of the pile here I finally got into this other bluff here I made a, a skid trail around the back side of the pile here to where the front of the truck is here I come in and uh, drop them over here but uh, saws on the roster today that we're going to be using is uh, one that I've never showed on the channel here before. This is, uh, of course, a good old uh, Husqvarna Triple Five. Uh, this is one of their first gen Mark One, I, I guess, whatever. They kind of replaced them after with the Triple Five uh, Professional, which is sort of their Mark II or their upgraded version. This saw is like, another one of these saws that's like new, but I did not buy this brand new. Uh, this was somebody else's saw. They had a bit of a mis mishap or misfortune with it. Uh, to best describe it, uh, no, there was no problem with the auto tune. Uh, first thing people do is uh, blame all these uh, Husqvarna newer 500 series saws that everything that uh, ever goes wrong with them has to be uh, something to do with the auto tune. Well, this is uh, nothing to do with the auto tune. This they actually. Uh, did something silly. This was another one of those cases where somebody bought it to do a severe storm cleanup. Uh, they, were, they had uh, a few big trees in their yard again, one of those type of deals that blew over and got damaged. So they went to their local dealer and there was no uh, farm and ranch type saws. I think they wanted a 450 rancher, but of course after a storm everybody cleaned. That's the first saws to get cleaned out. Uh, of course the dealer had a bunch of these I guess on the shelf, so they talked them into buying this. Nothing wrong with the saw, the owner was very happy with it until they made the classic mistake with uh, many of these uh, smaller Husqvarna saws with the outboard clutch. They've got the chain brake in the chain brake cover. So what they did was when they were cutting in those damaged trees, they hit a nail or something like that, they said they buggered up the chain, the owner told me. I we'll had to swap out the, pull the chain off and put to put a new chain on because like most people they don't know how to sharpen or weren't going to be bothered, just throw a new chain on and go again. Uh, only discover for whatever reason, I know the reason, they couldn't figure it out. Couldn't get the side cover off. Why? Because they had tripped the chain brake. And when they want to take the side cover off, it was still locked onto the clutch drum, couldn't get it off, couldn't figure it out, like a lot of people have done typical boo-boo. He got upset and played with it, played with it, played with it. He told me for over an hour, couldn't get it off. Got out of frustration, went in the shop, grabbed a big pry screwdriver, pry bar, and uh, jammed it between the cover and the front of the saw there. Started prying, did not break the chain brake cover, 
but broke a shoulder or the corner part of the crankcase uh, divider wall there that runs alongside the muffler now he was all the owner was all upset figured he ruined the saw took it to the dealer dealer pulled it partly well, just pulled the cover off and uh, told him yep yep saw is uh, shouldn't be used it's busted broken we can order you a new uh, crankcase half and repair it if you want uh, but the cost of the labor and the and the part would be more than the saw is worth so just buy another new one kind of an unscrupulous dealer one of the mechanics working there says well I'll buy it off you and the owner told me what he was offered was nothing short of an insult I think the mechanic offered him 50 bucks for it said that's all it was worth for a junk jug saw so the owner took it home put it back up in the rafters of his car garage and left it on a storage shelf above his uh, garage door opener for I don't know six or seven years until he decided to uh, put it up for sale and uh, I seen the ad and uh, offered him uh, less than he was asking but uh, all he asked me was are you reselling it I said nope I said I'm gonna use it I knew it was wrong it was uh, just a chunk of the ca casing was broken um, no, the crankcase isn't busted into the oil tank or anything like that. Just the upper shoulder there, uh, like I say, that divider wall between the muffler and the, the the tin cover plate is still there. So I mean, it's I mean, it's not the not the end of the world. Uh, I think the owner was asking like 250 bucks. I offered him. I know I felt kind of guilty, but I offered him 150. He said, No, I'm not going to sell for 150. But if you give me 180 bucks, it's yours. So for 180 dollars, I got a Essentially an almost brand new saw. Now this is, I uh, believe, a 2017. So this does already have the newer uh, updated carb. It had the the slot over here, the 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 heat the, the heat release uh, relief cut in the top cover. So this was the partially updated. I don't know how many updates were done on it or not. After that, I know, like I say, when they. I know after these they came out with the with the second gen series of them and they upgraded the crankcase and bearings and whatever and well for what it is it is and however long it'll run it'll run and I'm using it and it's perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with it so I've been running it for a while I like it I this is not the first auto tune saw for me I do have some other auto tune saws that I I don't talk about it or show them on the channel much because there seems to be just a lot of criticism around these saws and uh, I don't know I had it sitting around I bought it like a a year and a half almost two years ago already and I just hadn't got around to running it so like I say for for the money I thought well what the hell I'll take a chance on and I do have other I don't have any 562s but I have a John's Red 2260 which is uh, uh, kind of the European the the North American version of the European 560 XP uh, all small bar this is a small small bar mount saw along with my 2260 that's also a small bar small mount bar saw uh, 562 was the, of course the large bar mount and that's actually the only saw that's a large bar mount out of all these uh, out, of, out of this family of the saws built on this chassis all the other ones is triple fives and 560s and 2260 John Red and 2258 uh, the sister saw to this would have been the John Red 2258 actually so uh, 2260 was the full blown full blown pro saw and the, and the 2258 was the detuned just like uh, the triple five is the detuned version of the 562 and the 560 XPs. So, anyways, so we be running this uh, triple five today along with uh, the little uh, 261C uh, here. The still the now, uh, what do these two saws have in common? Totally different brands. That's a 50cc. This is a 60cc class saw, but they're both. Uh, that's an Mtronic. This is auto tune self-adjusting carbs and today was one of those days that I could run any of the other saws in my collection but uh, the last time I ran all my other saws was when it was a lot colder weather and uh, I was going to grab two or three of them but I uh, realized that I'd have to uh, do a little uh, carb tuning on all of them not the worst thing in the world only takes me a few minutes but uh, sometimes one of those days and today was one of those days where I just wanted to grab a saw and go cut I don't uh, don't feel like uh, monking around uh, adjusting carbs so I just grabbed the, the Amtronic and the Auto Tune, and away we go. We're going to be cutting here shortly. So, like I say, anyways, going to get on with it here and uh, trim up this ugly pine tree and uh, push all the brush and limbs and tops and all that good stuff there uh, back in the bush there and let it rot down and do its thing. And then uh, 
we're gonna do some bucking on the landing here on the on the pile here I got a couple three already pushed up there I'm gonna pull up these other two over here get the stumps off them bring them up to the pile and uh, and I'll be using the triple five to do some bucking I've been uh, no they're not uh, not a big saw but it's not big wood that I'm cutting and they're fast I've got a good uh, Oregon chain now uh, a couple of viewers in uh, one of the videos back I was mentioning about putting a uh, an Oregon chain on my uh, a brand new Oregon chain on my, one of my other saws, and I was corrected that I'm not supposed to say Oregon. It's not how it's pronounced from people who live in Oregon. Uh, I was told it's supposed to be pronounced Oregon. So we're going to be running this saw with a, an old, uh, almost new but an old stock uh, LGX that I had, a full chisel uh, non safety chain, and uh, we'll be putting this. Uh, Ori gun chain to work. So, anyways, not to make fun of anybody living in Ori gun, but uh, anywho, we're gonna get on with it here. Okay, we're gonna give that uh, triple five a little bit of a run here. We're gonna limb out this hairy pine tree here. So.
Can't, uh, can't make a, a log out of that one there, or a pulpwood stick. Uh, got a big ugly fire scar in it up there, I'll further up the tree here. An old injury in the tree. It's uh, right deep in there, so. And then there's another one there, and then it's got a bunch of bumps and knots, and starts uh, doing all kinds of wavy, crooked uh, stuff there. So unfortunately, looks like there's going to be a whole bunch of, uh, well, not unfortunately for me, just a bunch of firewood. But uh, anyways, uh, that poplar there, like I say, I got to knock the stumps off, or cut the stumps off them, and then drag them up and top them, and uh, shove all that brush and crap back over into the back into the bush here. So keep on keeping on. This triple uh, five is uh, running really well. I'm uh, quite pleased with it here. So
Now when you're doing a series of hard bucks like this, like if you're cutting like I just did here off the stump and bucking up a whole bunch of bucks here like I just did here one after the other, don't just take and shut saw off cold turkey like just kill it right then and there. As soon as some guys you'll see them do that. They'll literally just finish cutting and then boom, they shut the saw off and they're like that. That's the worst thing you can do for these auto-tune saws is just kill them and shut them off like that right on the spot. Then guys will come around and then 30 seconds later they come back to them and then they want to pull them and expect them to fire back off first start. Most of the time it's fine, but on the odd saw, they don't like that. Any saw doesn't like that. Don't take and run them hard, bucking one buck after another, running them, running them, running them steady. Especially if you've got a dull chain in, like you can see here. I don't have a dull chain, I've got a very sharp chain. I'm making some, uh, some uh, nice big long flakes here when I'm cutting. So that's, uh, you've got to have a sharp chain. And I love these saws, you can't compare the, the, the anti-vibration system in them, they are smooth as silk. These are great saws for that. Uh, even the new little still saw that I got, that 261, it's got a, a weird uh, high frequency vibration in it. And I run a few different one of those and they're all the same. Uh, they're a lot smoother than the old old 26s and MS 260s, but they still are not as smooth as these 500 series uh, Huskies. I don't know what it is about these saws, but they're just a they're beautiful smooth running saw. They've got a very good uh, anti-vibe in them and I love them for that fact. That's why I, I do like running them. Uh, anyways, like I say, just let a saw idle for 30 seconds to a minute after you've cut cutting. Especially on these auto-tune saws, it gives the, the computer a chance to uh, recalibrate and let them, uh, well, like now here, it'd be perfectly fine to shut it off. Like after you've run them for a bit, just uh, like I say, running them hard, doing some bucking like this, just uh, make sure you let them idle down for a little bit, to, just to run some more cool, just to run some more fuel through them, to lubricate everything, the internals, your bearings, your bottom end. And let's let them cool down a bit. They need, they need air. They're an air-cooled motor. That's what they do. And these 500 series saws do have a tendency to run on the hot side. Right from the factory, they have fairly aggressive timing numbers and even their port timing and everything on. They're, they're made to run like a ported. They're made to run like a custom ported saw right from out of the box from the factory. And if it's a hot, warm day out and it's humid, just let the saw run a little bit. Uh, just lets it climatize, gets it cooled down, gets some some of that uh, heat out of the off, off the cylinder and out of the crankcase, and then shut them down. And just let them let them sit for a bit. Now I'm curious to see if it's going to refire on one start because this saw, like I say, everybody always claims that these uh, auto tunes ah they're crap. They don't which more this and that. I want to see if it's going to refire on uh, one pull, and then I'm going to go and uh, take and uh, talk. Uh, cut the stumps off these poplars here so let's see let's see if my theory holds true here if you let a saw cool down like you should let's see if it's going to start back up on one one pull I don't care don't uh, you can do what you want with your saw but uh, all I know with my saws that's how I always uh, how I always treat them I don't uh, I don't uh, for the most part if I'm doing a lot of hard bucking the firewoods buck after buck I don't uh, take and uh, kill them right off the right off the hop. See, I carried it back to where the camera's sitting here. Same deal. Just let them run a little bit to acclimatize. Let the let the auto tune adjust. And uh, mostly importantly, it's just to let the saw cool. Just let them idle a little bit. You don't have to let them idle excessively. If you let them do that for too long, then you're going to start getting the carbon uh, issues and coking and piston uh, carbon buildup issues in the cylinder, stuff like that. But uh, plugging up your exhaust port. But uh, 
It doesn't matter whether it's auto-tune, M-tronic, or just a good old-fashioned straight-up uh, adjustable carb saw.